Jackson Rusey going to answer that question right now. I'm just getting as loud as you can. Jackson, Michigan, are you ready for a beat now? Here we go. On the next fight of the night, ladies and gentlemen, brought to you by the National Guard. Introducing your next fighter, Carl the Truth Hoffman. Carl Huffman. Carl the Truth Huffman coming out to a little bit of rage against the machine. And you did nail this one. These guys definitely in the middle of a weight cut. Meeting no out of 190 pounds. It's no fun to stop eating. I wouldn't know. I want some nachos. I was looking for my lovely assistant, Amy Red Hot Russnell. Dude, those are uh, dank ass nachos. Are they? Believe me. I got the Nacho Baby Daddies. Yeah. They've got Nacho Baby I hope mamas. she makes a good choice because she's on her own. I don't know where she went, but. Kyle the Truth Huffman, like back up to fill the void. I like some rage walkout, man. James Hickok. James Hickok making his debut. A little Twisted Sister coming out. Nice. I wonder how old he is. Oh, he probably got this from Road Trip. <laughs> he got to be at least 39. He didn't understand. have the LP. Yeah, yeah. I had the LP. He got to be at least 39. With to D. Understand. Snyder and the big giant, like, thigh bone from some kind of a mastodon. <laughs> Blood dripping off the fucking thing. But evidently, Twisted Sister was not his song. He's going he's gonna to hit the cage before his walkout. Yep. Yeah. And let's hope he doesn't give a fuck. He's a CrossFit coach in his corner. He's a CrossFit trainer. Wow. <laughs> That's not your eye favor? Not. No nope. CrossFit. Introductions first. We're in the part of the card where they all wear real MMA shorts, also. Don't say that too soon. He's trained at Elite Force MMA by Adam Adrian Michigan, James Hickok. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've just uh, been informed by our National Guard representative. Hickok is a veteran. As Lee the Juggernaut Trombley has our combatants ready to catch weight. Here we go. Looks like Hickok already has a cut on his elbow. Wow. He did not like that punch. He got clocked pretty good in the temple. I had to rethink it for a minute. Almost fell down. Looks like Hickok's a little stronger. He's got no a little closer to a natural weight of 190 than his opponent. Ooh. But his opponent's got some thunder in his yes, hands. Yes, he does. He knows he's very, looks like he's pretty accurate. Ooh, just a little. Oh, oh that's going to do it. Nope. He's he was. Trombley knows what he's doing. We got a suspect. Uh, Not going to last much longer here, I don't think. It looks like Carl the Truth Hoffman. If he keeps his head away, he'll be all right. Well, I was going to say James can't handle the truth. <laughs> but he's hanging in there quite well, took in some abuse. The key to winning amateur fights is definitely your sparring training and learning how to slip those, slip and block those punches. If if you can block and counter, <laughs> yeah, you definitely want to start with a, a basic knowledge of a lot of different things. But that's why people make debuts, and that's what we're witnessing right here in uh, the form of James Hickok. First time inside the steel. There he goes. Good job. Weathered the storm quite well. He's looking to. He's in a half guard now, looking to get that other leg out of here. He needs to pry down on his face. There he goes. And release. Posture. Couple nice strikes. Probably close to halfway through this round. I would say so. 
A little over half. That's how you do it right there. Nice. nice. Elbow. A couple good short elbows by Hickok. Hickok's leg is wide open now, and he does take advantage of that and gets the mount. Shows some experience. I mean, passing guard that way. The key to that, to, to being able to get that TKO for full mount is to not worry about any power oh, whatsoever. Quick tap. Yeah. You don't worry about any power movements and just throw as many as you can as yeah. fast as Unload, you can. Unload, huh? And there's too many people that just wind them way up. It's like they're waiting, and every second that you give that opponent to recover is one less second that you're in control. I think we had a, Hickok had a disadvantage on his feet, but he's, he's definitely the victor there. He took a couple of hard shots, but the veteran fought overseas as well. He used to be in the National Guard, comes out with the victories. We turn it over to Phil, the voice Davy for your official decision here on ACSLive.tv. Ladies and gentlemen, the official ending is about to come to the team until the seven seconds of round one. Your winner, part two. <laughs> gotta do gotta do the pictures. It's a good win for good win for a debut. He earned it. Yeah, definitely. He knows he was in a fight. Here we go. The National Guard Color Guard. Singing our National Anthem tonight, that. Rebecca Henderson. Get on your feet, people. Henderson singing our national anthem. And we're gonna get ready for another flyweight debut contest coming up as we turn it over to your announcer here at the PCFL, Jackson, Michigan. Phil, the voice, Davey. Kane Loring. 
Kane Lauren making his debut at 125 here at BCFL. Dave the Butcher Clifford here live with Drew Gardner for ACSLive.tv. These skinny guys, these 125ers are making me want to buy some nachos. <laughs> we have to buy those? I don't know. I'm going to. Jason said tell them whatever we need. I'm just sending her up there. Support the yeah, nacho, nacho mamas. I actually bought mine too. <laughs> I do the same thing. I support. I try to buy shirts. He doesn't have a solid gold toilet, and that's really all I want. You know what I mean? Solid gold. You know, I could pass on the gold if I had one of them self-cleaning that it cleans you afterwards bidet. and stuff. Well, we, I grew up with a bidet. That's and I'll tell gross. you what, I miss it now in my adult life. I wouldn't want a wet ass, man. Oh, no. <laughs> it's legit. Does it dry it off? Dude? Do you have a wet ass after you put your pants on and <laughs> when you get out of the shower? No. What do you do first? Yeah, yeah you dry it off. You dry it off. And you keep a nice towel rack with the assorted amounts of towels. You keep the, the wet ones in a little basin. We had a silver basin underneath of our wet towels. Milk. <laughs> I grew up a prison guard redhead mom, man. We weren't spoiled with a bidet, man. Jackson MMA fighter here. fighter, the Smith. Uh, Carl Huffman, or uh, what is it? Kenny, Kenny, what are we doing here? Kenny the Jet? No, I mean, it's, I'm sorry. Kenny the Cyclone Smith. Yeah. Kane Loring. Kane Loring has uh, Quincy Rice directly in his corner, it looks like. Quincy's got another flyweight. Quincy is really successful with those 25, 35, and 45 pound fighters, man. I'll tell you what, he grows some killers down here. And I've been looking forward to seeing some of his newer guys here, and we're about ready to. Once again, the Michigan National Guard proud sponsor of this event as we turn it over to Phil the Voice Davey. He's and now, Lee Trombley gets our 25ers both ready to make their debuts inside the steel as he lets Kenny Smith's folks from Toledo find their way to his corner. Kane's looking real comfortable. You're gonna have to deal with a brawler, Kane. Yep, Kenny's a spark plug. Kane is like an anaconda on that full mount. Yeah, he really was. He got that quick. Jeez. Oh, he's trying to put that arm triangle. Oh, I thought he's he was gonna take that arm triangle. Flatten right he's out. Got a rear naked choke already. That was excellent. He's oh, like an over. anaconda. Wow. Good kid. Damn. Excellent positioning he was looking for it the whole time. Well, Good Kenny job. Smith's going to have a little something to think about on his way back to Toledo. Kenny the Cyclone, he came out like a Cyclone, <laughs> but he did not touch down. I think it was his mom or girlfriend just came in, gave him a big hug right in the cage. Well, you know, nowadays, you never know. You just never know. <laughs> Either way, sister. Ladies and gentlemen, you're know. 24 seconds in the first round. Your winner, Kane Loring. It's a good fight. Kane Loring with his hands raised made quick work of the Ohioan. No wonder Ohio doesn't like our fighters coming to fight. They get, they get beat up a lot. I've heard Don Williams say he's going to whoop 50 people's ass already. I think I have too. That's his standard greeting, isn't it? All right, back up to fill the voice. Davey getting our next competitors down here. The next fight's going to be Dakota Heminger mm -hmm. against Quinton Allen at the lightweight. Mildly experienced. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this next fight is brought to you by the Zealous. It is for your next fighter, Dakota. Who? DK's fight, Heminger. What's up? Can you say this next fight's brought to us by the I believe so. Here we go. 
Rock, paper, scissors. I'm going to tell you, Lee gets this one. Smoked him. Phil got him. Phil in the lead tonight, too. I haven't seen Lee win yet. Let's just be happy. I mean, let's, I'm sure Phil is that it's not a boxing match. It's just, yeah, yeah, certainly. Lee Trombley has some of the best striking I've ever seen in amateur MMA. Yeah, has he been, uh, now of course he took a really good job, didn't he? And, and once you get to that level, and when you perform that well, you gotta put all your time into it or not do it at all. Yeah, this this kid, he's, <laughs> he was discussing it earlier. He said, I, I can't even, I'm not even, I'm done judging. I'm done, done refing these shows, because every time I'm done with a show, it takes me three weeks of trying to figure out how I can work my schedule so that I can start fighting again. Yeah, it takes I him bet. three weeks to get over that feeling. Uh, uh, that makes a lot of sense. He, he has a lot of passion. He carries a lot of passion into everything that he you know, talks about and thinks about and believes in. And that kid just bumped his head on the crossbar. He's, well, he's one hell of a fighter regardless. This kid's a lanky lightweight. Yes. Looks like he's from the Legion. He's got the Legion. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I thought I saw the Legion's lo logo on his shorts. So. Yep, that's the Legion. Yes, it is. Home of the famous George Superman Allen. You familiar oh, with yeah. George Allen? Oh, absolutely. Who isn't? He'll 20, fight 25 he'll, and 14. He'll fight on the drop of a hat and he will show up and perform. I've seen him break three arms in a row. Wow. He didn't even give him a chance to tap. It was, wow. It was, it was bad blood, all three. Well, here comes Quentin Allen, and we're going to get our formal introductions here at PCFL on ACSLive.tv. logo because I just put it on my June 1st flyer. Oh, excellent. <laughs> excellent. Good call. Good eye. Lee like Trombley it. gets the door shut. And here we go. I like the, the traditional Muay Thai shorts on Quentin Allen. Kind of looks look like a smaller, kicks. younger Tony Hervey. Yeah. Let's look for some kicks from him. I don't know. He's got kind of a wide base. Can't tell what he's looking for. Took a shot and returned one. A little bit of a clinch up here. Both Nobody. pretty good athletes. There's those Muay Thai knees. He's got his left hand on the left wrist of Heminger. There's the turn. Oh, nice, nice shot. Right hand unloads right in front of us and takes him down to the canvas. That was awesome. Good job. And now he's pulled, pulled him into his guard here, Heminger. Dakota looks like he's comfortable on his back. He certainly does. More comfortable there than he was in the clinch these fighters knew the referee and wanted to stand up all he's got to do is lock him down Lee will stand him right up if you lock him down now, I see Allen trying to posture up there and denied needs to get his elbow out here pushes down on the neck of Dakota and Dakota quickly gets that arm away starting, starting to move his hips a little trying to work a bit of a triangle move there wasn't he almost try, saw he was going for an omoplata for a second now, if he's from the Legion, he's spent some time training with George Allen, which uh, that's, that's no joke. George is one of the best submission fighters ever in Michigan. Quinton back into half guard now and throwing some body shots on Dakota. Not too significant of a strike, though. Dakota scooching his hips out. I can't see the top end. And now he not only pulls guard on Quinton, but he's got him in his corner. Yeah. Dakota's in... Uh, Dakota's in his own corner now. 
It's in a little bad spot being pushed up against the cage like that. Taking a couple of There's not strikes. as many movement options when you're right there. He doesn't take much more than one shot before he sucks him right back in, though. There he goes. He's, she's shooting the armbar. Nope, nope, nope. Denied. Quinn knows what he's doing. He's still shooting it. Most of the time, it's got to be a little faster. It's got to be a, an immediate, deliberate movement to, to catch anyone who's, who's trained our bar defense. And Quinton's uh, strength and shorter stature Absolutely. really served him well right there. Absolutely. And he's raining yeah. elbows down from the guard. Good balance by Quinton Allen. He's got to watch that back door. Kind of an impeded view from the referee here. Trombley right on top of the action. Bit of a rape choke being applied. That's what it looks like. <laughs> a rape choke. That's a shout out to James Lee. <laughs> 10 seconds remaining in the first. A little too late for Jiu Jitsu at this point. Yep. Time in the first round brought to you by the Michigan National Guard. <laughs> Our timekeeper is shaking the horn. Don't, don't shake the horn. Dan. Hey, don't shake it. <laughs> yeah, it's not aerosol, is it? <laughs> He's still shaking the damn horn. <laughs> Non-aerosol. We do use environmentally friendly air horns here at PCFL. Hey, don't shake it. <laughs> Timekeeper can't shake the horn. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> I was familiar with those by the time I was seven, eight years old. Mom, can I have one of those oh, so absolutely. that I can play with it? <laughs> You're absolutely right. If it's outside, it's okay. That was my answer. Yeah, that's the only reason I even had one. I never had any reason to use it except for just to blare that shit in my yep. neighbor's faces. Exactly. <laughs> you want to hear the most annoying sound ever? <laughs> All right, we got round two here. We've got a pretty evenly matched contest here. The lankier Heminger seeming to control on the ground, but he took some significant shots in the first, and I'm gonna have to say that I'll give that first round to Allen. Absolutely. Oh, now he's mixing it up a little bit. Yeah, he's got both these guys getting comfortable. He's a little hesitant. Quentin's a little hesitant with his hands. Going for a ride again, but gets sucked into a guillotine. You know, he just had too much, too hard of a time and no, no opportunity of finishing. Dakota from his back like that, so I, I wouldn't put him there. Quinton almost helping him out there by taking mount. He doesn't seem to have it too tight. Both guys kind of almost taking a little breather here early in the second. The and problem with this is, yeah, you can get that sweep, but now he's... Nice posturing right there. He's in a full mount here. He's, he's ready such to a rain high down. full mount, your nice best option. elbows. Best oh. option there is to bury an arm and go out the back. Throwing some right hands. There he goes. Backdoor spectacular. Oh, no, right into a triangle. Oh, he's got a good angle on it, too. He really does. Reaches over and pulls that foot. Oh, he's holy shit. That's over Great quickly. submission. That what was a spectacular job submission. right there. I thought Dakota was going to be the stronger submission fighter. Well, it was, uh, Allen was sleeping on him there. He was letting him think he was out of there all day and had the presence of mind to suck him right into that, that triangle. It was over. That was great. That is, you know, that backdoor move instead of burying an arm and chucking him over. Uh -huh. The way he did it was flip his body over like yeah, that. Yeah, And that's the, right into right the triangle. Position. Great presence of mind by Quentin Allen and a great fight by that was both a very, of these That was gentlemen. a very technical fight for being... You know, only four fights in between them both. The voice gonna make it official. And Anthony Coleman in Quinton's corner from Concede. Still, still waiting for my nachos, my red-headed assistant. There's a problem for me yet. Oh, look at that, she's on her way. 
unfortunately, if you do get hit, it will look near as good as it's like time. Come on, you make me look bad. Come on, son. All right. <laughs> oh, he's blushing. And now, ladies and gentlemen, rock and roll on to the next fight of the night. Your next fighter, Trevor Deathless T Fair. We've got a little more experience in this next flyweight contest. Trevor Tayfair, four and three, making his way down to the steel here for the Prison City Fight League. Oh, just these 25ers reinforcing my need for those nachos once again. I'm not familiar. I've I've seen Tayfair when he raised his hand in the roll call when Quincy Rice was doing roll call. Uh -huh. I've seen him before. I think he's fought here before. Um, it's quite odd to get more than two 125 fights on a, on a card. Dude, this is the third one already. And there's a there's actually a um, there's straw a straw weight. That's Holy. a straw weight bout coming up wow. later in the card. Also, that's awesome. I I'm was 100. To that. I was 115 pounds when I was seven years old, eight years old. I would have had to be at least ninth grade by the time I got there. Oh yeah, I've seen this kid fight. As always, you get the, the real quick, the real quick guys at 25. Phil ditched the coat. Yeah, I see that. What's going on with that? Where's your coat, man? Pushing the vengeance gear. I used to have a vengeance coat. My son's got it now. Oh, Lee Trombley almost took him out. Was that a Pettis? Is that a Pettis move? It, it looked like it. Look at the Tony Gwynn throwback over there. See that? Yeah, that's rare. Spring training I, outfit. I, I anyway. bet he got ripped off by a business buying it though. That oh, looks certainly. like it was 150 bucks. <laughs> yeah, most likely. <laughs> or Stephen Berry's. Never know. Ty Fair has no idea where he's supposed to be. I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> Looks like we got a Jackson MMA backed fighter here. Yeah, this kid's in shape too. Yeah, he's a big 25er. Typher are quite stocky. Is good to our formal introductions. The introductions first. Introducing the fighter standing to my left, fighting out of the red corner. Bringing in 125 pounds, heading to 5 foot 9. Who is 2 and 4 record on the line tonight? He's an independent mixed martial artist fighting out. Jackson, Michigan, Jeremy Hellraiser. And now, introducing the fighter standing to my right, coming in the blue corner, weighing in at 121 pounds, standing five foot two, putting his four and three record on the line tonight. He is also an independent mixed martial artist, fighting out of Toledo, Ohio, to River Deathless Tyson. Razor has Jackson MMA's Anthony Michael in his corner. Oh, I noticed that. Yes, he does. A uh, real solid competitor, Anthony Michael. He's still announced as an independent, so must not spend too much time in the gym. He does stick his chin way out there. Or he didn't fill it out on his announcer card. Or that. Well, he is really sticking his chin out there. Ty Fair going right for that takedown. Nice transition that didn't work out for These him. guys are quick. Squirrely. He wants to spin. He doesn't like that north-south position. Difficult to tell who's in control at any given time in these flyweight contests, isn't it? Razor looks a lot, lot stronger. He's got... Yeah, he's making use of that length. That fear is not so scared. stocky. He just wants to take him down. Oh, we got pop. Razor popped him. Nice neck. Did you see how Razor scooped him off, off of him with his neck, with his head? Yeah, he really that did. A, that was That's a good sweet. positioning move. A lot of little transitions here. He's got the double underhooks. Let's go over him. Uh, just, just a takedown 
uh, just a machine. Just keeps trying to take him down here. You gotta wonder when you give up on that. When do you stop doing that? Razor's just spinning out of this. <laughs> Always working for those underhooks. His arms are gonna be tired. And both mid gentlemen on their feet. Tyfer looking like he is taking some abuse. There's the, there's a nice. Decent little nice leg throw. kick by Tyfer, but it looked like he caught a left at the same time. He's got him. No, nope, it's not gonna be deep enough. Didn't have the position. Almost threw a soccer kick. That would have. Oh, that one hurt. That was the liver shot to end the fucking fight right there. Ouch. I felt that in my own kidneys. And that was a, from a 25. That was a good one. He wound, wound right up on it. And some blood coming from the Ohio fighter. Well, the only takedown is he's going to be taking his ass back down to Ohio with a loss. And a 50-50 record here. At the hands of Jackson MMA. Props to Quincy for going with some Midwestern fighters. Back to fill the voice, Davey, for your official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes with 1 minute and 46 seconds in round one. Your winner, Jeremy Razor. Johnny with a good performance. Figured out his opponent's game plan and circumvented it. Absolutely. Coming in here for our blood boys tonight. Coming in here to clean it up after the fighters. Yeah. Really. Got to give the cleanup crew okay, some good props. Let's give it one more time. Cheer for the Blood Boys. Not a fun job. No. Never had to do it. I paid somebody 60 bucks to do this it at my show last time. By Zelts. And it's 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 uh, really yeah, notable that they're not using bleach fighter. here. Thank God. Yeah. Nachos are here. I'm a happy man. Alonzo St. John, 2 10 and 1 at 165. It's Patrick Underhill, who's 5 and 10. So, two determined. Looks good on paper. Two determined catchweight fighters coming out here, right in between a welterweight and a lightweight. Did Lee get a victory? Lee got his first victory in the Rock, Paper, Scissors ongoing tournament with Phil. <laughs> Good job, Lee. Phil was so shamed by that loss, he's left the cage. Basketball shorts. I told you. The underdog, Underhill. Well, evidently he's been the underdog 10 times. He's five and 10 as a competitor. And this is Battle of the Generic Entry Songs. <laughs> a lot of fights with these guys. Yeah, Alonzo St. John in the Carolina blue and white shorts. Basketball shorts. Why is Phil Davies so good at rock, paper, scissors? Is, have, you, have, you, have you been informed on his? Well, one time I... Um, was having a little trouble reading something and I put his glasses on and it was just like, remember what the Terminator saw? I think Phil can anticipate what you're gonna do. It's odd. Is that from his kickboxing career? I do, I do believe so. I think so. Introductions first. Introducing the fighter standing to my left, fighting out of the red corner. Weighing in at 165 pounds, standing 5 foot 10. But he is training out of Scott Bridge, Michigan, Alonzo St. John. Phil opted to skip over the record there. 
Probably couldn't read it. Most MMA fighters write like a three-year-old. <laughs> they do. The Underdog Underhill. And referee Lee Trombley making sure the cage door gets latched. Going to start this catch weight contest. Yeah, some real taped up knees on Underhill. Yeah, he Whoa, tried missed that. to throw a head kick and Underhill Oh. Opportunistic jumps into side control. Alonzo into Underhill's guard. Underhill takes a body lock. Quickly gives it up after he gets struck a couple of times. Trying to trap that arm. Sawing away and he's got him back in his guard. He's got a good body lock here. Punching his way out of it. Needs to release that guard and shoot those arms. St. John goes back down to one knee, trying to create some separation, some body shots, and then a nice sweeping elbow strike, just grazing the underdog. St. John had, should have passed guard when he had the chance. He's got an arm triangle. Oh, it's Good over. job, he didn't even have to sit through. Underhill out of just nowhere. Strong arm triangle. Was definitely not in an advantageous position until he took him. Oh, a picks him job. up, good guy. Good catch weight contest and hopefully the underdog starting a little momentum for himself. Absolutely. Here. Feeling great now, that was a great arm triangle. Must have been strong. Yeah, as soon as he jumped to side control, I knew that was deep. Usually you've got to, you, you know, you've got to sit through your hips and make that turn in. Unless you're Brock Lesnar or Pat Underhill. Yeah. And Underhill picks up his trophy. And Alonzo St. John will have to try again. Drops his record to two, 11 and one. And bringing out our next fighters back up to fill the voice, Davey. Running through the fights tonight, I'm loving it. I was scared at first. No, I know, thank you, goodness. They have, they've done a good job pushing the action and bringing these guys out here, Quincy and Joe. Give me some props for that, because when you've got this many fights, you've got to do that or you're going to have trouble. A lot of fighters want to fight. Fight for Prison City Fight League. That's the idea. They like the way they're treated, and they're giving them the right opportunity. I do also uh, want to make note that they did have a bit of a competitor here in, the, in their hometown at one point in time. And I know that when that happens, when you have two people that are competing, you end up with a, some pretty heavy fight cards because they don't want to lose any of these guys to the competition. I wonder how much of that comes into play here. I Probably none, because Steve's all done. I think, yeah, I think Prison City Fight League has had, has had uh, the lockdown since they started. But, um, yeah, I, got, I agree, good, good choice of words. Prison City got it on lockdown. Mm -hmm. Not sure what's going on here. What are they looking for? I don't know what just happened. <laughs> Put your rice to the bar, please. Put your rice to the bar. To the bar? Quincy Rice to the bar, please. Oh boy, that doesn't always end well. Oh, 
All right, I'm confused. Let's see some fights. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm not quite sure what's going on here. Uh, as we groove to the soulful sounds of black sheep. <laughs> it's Shiloh. <laughs> My name is Shiloh. I'll be your waiter tonight. <laughs> I'll be your waiter like all night. Stab on Shiloh Blue, one of the... One yeah, of the, somebody found the opportunity and they rocked him. One of the... <laughs> Shiloh is one of the elite videographers in, in Michigan. Yeah, he truly is. Even after working for Jeff Pittock as long as he did. Sean the Gator Dunn and just visited us over here. There are still two Gators at the table and they happen to be attached to my feet. <laughs> oh wow, he's gonna propose. She said yes. He said, will you be my wife? I gave her a ring. And we're waiting on the reaction. She said yes. <laughs> and and, and, and props to Phil for acting surprised. <laughs> How about that? Both of them. Oh, yeah. Not a dry eye in the house. I see Lee Trombley wiping the corner of his eyes. <laughs> Hopefully the ring fits. Or Looks like it does. Good job. Oh, I guess we're on another break. Less breaks, more fights. Also, 29 of them tonight. <laughs> The extreme MMA lifestyle. Also visit Jackson MMA. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back in the afternoon just a few. All right, that is our cue for Smoke the break. break. Smoke them if you got them, ATS Live.tv. Dave the Butcher Clifford and Drew Gardner signing off. Nice. No breaks. I know. What the fuck? They must only have a certain amount of gloves. That's probably it.
Gotta be willing to make that change, though. A lot of change. Yeah, buddy, the leader of the championship flight is yeah, 70. That's pretty good. Now you must get the for something other than talent. Oh, wait. Yeah. 